Yes, hello everyone. Uh, first, want to be sure that I'm sharing everything. This is the. So you see my slide? Yes, do? we do. Okay. Yes, we do. So thank you. Thank you, Cordula. Thank you, Dirk, uh, also for inviting me, for having me. And I take the chance also to thank um, Matias and Jorgos for the interesting uh, presentations. Um, uh, regarding my presentation, um, it happened just one week ago, more or less, that they that that you contacted me, and um, the challenge that I faced uh, was how to connect um, uh, something that is at destination level, at uh, destination management organization level, uh, regarding energy management uh, to the private sector. To in my case, I will go all the way down to a hotel. So this challenge uh, at the beginning um, uh, seemed to me very, very, uh, yeah, too much uh, of a challenge. Um, but I, after talking to you and uh, and and uh, after discussing how to get there, I think in my presentation we will uh, be able to connect the dots from a very macro perspective all the way down to a micro perspective. Um, this is an introduction. Um, because of this challenge, the first thing I did when I uh, got the assignment was, let's see if the next slide moves, one second. Yes. So the first thing I did when I got this uh, title, Measure and Manage Energy Consumption in a Tourist Station Destination, was to ask ChatGPT. Okay, uh, most of you already know it. And I thought it was like a good exercise to do so. And uh, you will be able to read it right here. Um, it's as you, the, the, whoever has tried ChatGPT will be as surprised as I am of the um, way the answers come. And I just leave it there for you to consult. Um, I asked them exactly this question, and these are the six points that came up. Well, at the beginning, there were 10 points, but I thought 10 points is too much to fit in a slide. So I asked ChatGPT to reduce it to six, and these are the six. So uh, the baseline is really an important thing to have goals, to prove those goals, to do the audits, then uh, promote energy, energy efficient practices, monitor everything and communicate it. And for me, the most important one is the last one, to collaborate and communicate. I think um, on a destination level, uh, the collaboration among all stakeholders is one of the, um, yeah, uh, of the most important um, steps we need to address uh, because the problems are not uh, isolated. The problems all are related to each other and therefore uh, there's no one single solution for one person and the rest uh, is not affected. Everything has to do with everything and therefore uh, public private collaboration is key. Okay, after this exercise, I thought I'm almost finished, but then I said, no, this cannot be it. So I went a step further and I thought to myself, I am living in Mallorca. So Georgos, thank you for your uh, inputs on the Balearic Islands. I think Mallorca is probably one of the yeah, biggest tourist destination in the world. Um, and therefore, whatever I feel, I hear, I see in this island all throughout the year uh, um, could be a proxy for any other destination, uh, tourist destination uh, worldwide. Um, so these are the challenges that I am uh, putting on the table. This is my uh, contribution. This is not consulted with ChatGPT. So I think this is like a sentence that seems very simple and very, uh, I would almost say <clears throat> stupid, <clears throat> but there is a lot of truth behind it. More people need and use more resources, okay? So in a highly dense populated area as Mallorca, for instance, they have a concentrated impact on economy, society, and environment 
of that destination, okay, on all three levels. And this um, can lead to positive aspects like full employment, um, you know, uh, richness, uh, um, uh, education, uh, opportunities, and so on. But it can also uh, have negative impacts as uh, depletion of uh, natural resources and, and, and scarcity of water and so on. Um, and there goes my third point. Whenever a social inequality in that tourist destination feels, that doesn't mean it has to be, but it feels higher than average. So the people that live on that destination have the feeling that uh, they, there is a social inequality. That's when uh, words like uh, decrecimiento, which I translated as anti-growth or decrease, turismophobia, or over-tourism arises, okay? So these are the words that uh, destinations as Mallorca or Venice or even Amsterdam um, uh, start to hear in, in, on the streets. And, and, and the, the, yeah, the, the origin of those words come from social inequality. And uh, there's no people that says, oh, I cannot drink water, so I hate over tourism. No, uh, it comes from, I have the feeling that I'm not in the same position as others. I have the feeling that um, my uh, social situation, my social background, my economical situation is worse than the average. And the reason for that is blamed to tourism. So. So this feeling is something that we need to address uh, from a destination level, but even from a private level, okay? So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there is, therefore it is key that we ensure that the whole of the destination society has at least access to the following, okay? This is um, especially very um, uh, present right now on Mallorca because as many of you may know, we are, uh, in pre-election uh, uh, period right now on the on May 28th, uh, there are elections. So all politics and all media uh, puts uh, wonderful uh, receipts on the table on how to solve our society, and um, and 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 you will hear uh, part of this um, comments that I'm putting here. That doesn't mean that that I'm going to be a politician. Okay. So good quality, affordable drinking water um, as uh, uh, in, in Catalonia, especially right now, uh, the, the, the water scarcity because of uh, missing rainfall, it's really a big headache. And, and yeah, um, so, so this is something that is going to come up uh, more and more, uh, as you also may have heard this morning or, or these past days, uh, uh, we are probably to uh, pass the 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius over pre-industrial uh, uh, level temperatures uh, in the next five years, within the next five years, uh, because of uh, global global emissions, but also because of the combination with the El Nino Southern Oscillation um, uh, uh, process that is just about to start. Okay, so water is a problem. The other one is, of course, energy. We felt it with the Ukraine war. Um, in places like Ibiza, housing is like the worst problem at all. The people that have a, uh, an opportunity to go there to work in a hotel or to go there and be a, a teacher in a school or to work for a installation company, um, they have not a problem with the wage or the hours of work. They have a problem with not finding a bed to sleep, okay? It's interesting that in, a, in an island that is full of beds, you don't get beds for the workers. So uh, these are the contradictions that need to be addressed. Um, decent jobs with decent salaries, of course. And uh, on top of these basics that I would call uh, we're happy if we have also clean air. Clean air on an island, it's quite easy uh, because of the closeness to, to the sea and so on. But on cities like Palma with 400,000 uh, 
um, uh, inhabitants and almost 1,000 cars per 1,000 inhabitants uh, as a car density, uh, you may have uh, uh, gases in the cities of Palma that you inhale, not as worse as uh, Delhi, for instance, but still uh, a problem. Okay, uh, the access to pristine landscapes uh, in the nature is also something of a right for uh, the people that live on an island. Um, uh, in, in, because of Instagram, there are many places on Mallorca that um, <clears throat> I can only see them on pictures right now. Why? Because there's no way to get there in the high season. It's overcrowded and um, and yeah, and, and 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 some people, it's not my case, but some people may say, why can I not get there, which I did in when I was 15 or when I was 10 or when I was, when I was a kid. <clears throat> Another point is energy independence or autarky um, related to, to, as I said before, to the affordable energy. In this case is um, <clears throat> the sense of, of having a place in that, that, for instance, Canary Islands, <clears throat> they need to be um, independent from uh, big supplies that come from far away if they want to uh, become a net zero in, in the near future. This is something that uh, Matthias already addressed, uh, <clears throat> but it is, is something that any, any of the islands uh, where we live in uh, should strive. Um, and of course, don't forget about this, which is like the humankind mission of our times, the redu reduction of uh, emissions. So because of those challenges, I also came up with some solutions, okay? The biggest one or the, the first one, not the biggest one, the first one is we need to know where we are. We need to know how much gasoline is in the tank. We need to know how far we can get, we need to know how fast we're driving, uh, whether we are slow, uh, we need to know the pressure of our tires. We need to know this information and it needs to be a one-stop shop. This is something that I saw in the comments of the chat that <clears throat> uh, we, we had a problem with no information and now we have a problem with over information. There are too many places where you could get information about anything. Uh, in my case, even here in Mallorca, even the number of tourists that visit us is not clear. Uh, some say 60 million, but you could find uh, sources that say other uh, numbers. And, and the next step is 60 million visitors. Is this 60 million overnights? Or is, uh, how, 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 how do you interpret these numbers? And if you interpret these numbers wrong and you didn't take any uh, ratios out of it or you build up your own KPIs, you may uh, have uh, wrong uh, solutions for wrong problems. So measurement is fundamental. Next step is you need to keep track of those measures and, um, and communicate them. I think it's also important that um, for society, uh, in, in the case of an island or a destination, uh, especially, you need to show your, uh, uh, yeah, your society, your main, your main uh, KPIs, you need to show them, they need to be aware of what are the good points of being a tourist destination, and what are the points that need to be improved from a, a, of a tourist destination. If you address them, then um, people would be uh, sensitive for any improvements, any solutions that you bring. Um, this, is, this, is, um, this is like the basics, okay? I'm writing down there uh, also STO Mallorca, the Sustainable uh, Tourism Observatory of Mallorca, which is uh, fantastic, um, but maybe it's not as known as it should be. Okay, so this is this is this is very basic. Then I said it before: private-public collaboration. I think that if we talk to each other, the public and the private, we will find out that we have many problems that are common, and that we may have many solutions that are, if not common, at least complementary. Like I have, for instance, I have too much. 
uh, wastewater from the sewage and I have too little water for the irrigation of my garden. So why don't we talk to each other? Why don't we share this information? And why don't we find a common solution? So let's go hand in hand. Let's find win-win approaches and implement them as soon as possible. Another point, uh, another solution that I propose is that the legal framework uh, that we all suffer um, uh, should be updated. That means uh, sometimes regulations come like 10 or 15 or even 20 years behind the society, society or the technological trends or innovations that come up. So this, um, yeah, this, this time frame of 15, 20 years behind is too much. We cannot wait uh, to, 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 to have this all written down. Uh, it needs to be faster and and being faster means maybe also to be simpler. Uh, not so many rules, not so many prohibitions. Uh, keep it simple and stupid, I would say. And on the other hand, those um, rules that we have, that we give us ourselves, they need to be uh, implemented and inspected. We need more inspections. We need to go uh, and, and move many people from the desk that are writing rules, we need to take them out of the desk and move them to the places to check whether those um, rules that already exist are implemented. And if not, then uh, we need to use fines. I mean, that's not something beautiful, but it's something necessary, okay? After that, technology. I like the sentence, technology brought us here and technology is the one that will bring us out of fear. I believe in that. We need to have a purpose-driven technology, not technology just for the sake of it. It needs to have a purpose. So find first, what is the objective? What is the goal you're looking for? And then check around. There is tons of technology from big to small, from uh, very uh, sophisticated to very simple. I'm writing here wind turbines, electrolyzers, autonomous vehicles, to internet of things, blockchain, whatever, okay? These are our tools. They will help us to get there. After that, preserve limited resources with innovation. So um, there are three things that I want to mention here. Uh, innovation can bring uh, that private initiatives in tourism, for instance, big hotels, um, help them to become circular help them to implement cradle to cradle solutions for their businesses, okay? When I say help them, you can either not do anything to stop them from doing that or even promote it or facilitate it. But the, what one big help would be not put any hurdles. The second one is uh, seek energy and uh, water independence autarky is uh, another initiative that I would strongly recommend for big private um, uh, businesses uh, on, a, on a tourist destination. Why? Because they are capable of doing so. And if you pluck them out, if you separate them uh, from uh, using your uh, limited resources by providing themselves those resources because they are capable of, then you will, um, yeah, you will have kind of a win-win situation, okay? Um, and uh, the third proposal in innovation is that uh, help them to reduce the big, the big private uh, initiatives in tourism, help them to reduce dependence on public infrastructures that are paid by public money. For instance, electric grid, water pipes or roads. If they have a way to avoid the use of those public infrastructures, and they are willing to do so, then why don't you help them? Why don't you facilitate it? Okay. So in general terms, help the private touristic sector to minimize the exploitation of the destination's public resources will, while at the same time, help it to assure its long-term sustainable contribution to the local society and its economy. So on the one hand, you limit you help them to limit their harm, but on the other hand, you help them to keep 
um, uh, their, their positive impact, okay, to assure that they still uh, create jobs, that they still give, uh, yeah, it's they would say something to eat to the people, okay. Um, and then I go down to the micro level and I'm almost done. It's the case of Cala Serena, Robinson Cala Serena. It's a hotel <clears throat> on the east coast of Mallorca. It's uh, about 400 rooms uh, big, but it's on a plot of 100,000 square meters. So it's a resort type of hotel. Um, its history began in 1974, but it was completely rebuilt in 2002. Uh, with this, it passed, it became a hotel that used to be seasonal, uh, six months open a year to a whole year uh, destination, open all year, uh, which um, also addresses the, the difficult subject or the difficult challenge of seasonality in a destination. Um, if you put the right incentives and the right conditions, uh, the private initiative will go that way. And um, and yeah, let's go for it. Uh, so as I said, 2002, 100,000 square meters. Ah, yes, very close to the coast. It's uh, at, at, at the beach. Um, I want to go down all the way back to 2011. Um, the challenges we were facing at that time were among others, but um, I want to address these that we had, like all the hotels in the east coast of Mallorca, terrible water quality. It's a very hard water, so all big hotels and even small hotels have a softener installation for the water so that um, their uh, pipes don't uh, get um, uh, full of caulk. And, and, you know, it's, it's a really yeah, poor water quality. The water that is supplied uh, from the public sector uh, claims to be drinking water, um, and it comes from mainly from wells, uh, from aquifers that are in that area, okay? So it's not desalination water, and it's not, uh, yeah, it's aquifer water. Um, okay, uh, so terrible water quality, we were suffering that. Uh, we had also an issue with our neighbors, uh, why we had um, a chiller, uh, that was an uh, old, inefficient chiller that uh, was very noisy. So during the day, it's not a big problem, but at night you heard it in the summer months when it was running all night. So the neighbors were not happy with that noise. Uh, that's uh, another example of uh, how close uh, tourism and society or, or, or residents um, uh, live together in a highly dense populated uh, destination as Mallorca. Um, uh, then we had high inefficiencies and leakages of all sorts uh, in water, but also uh, electric inefficiencies uh, and so on. Even, even um, refrigerants uh, uh, leakages very often, which are very potent greenhouse gases. We spent or we burned three 300,000 liters of oil every year to warm the water and to heat the rooms of the hotel, 300,000 liters. So all together we had big costs, high inefficiency and some complaints. And for that, we started on that same year an energy efficiency master plan. And I'm just gonna present you the highlights. Uh, first of all, we uh, implemented a building management system, which goes into digitalization, which goes into measuring everything, all supervised and all automatic. So that was a big step that gave us a lot of uh, efficiency. Then we changed the oil boilers by biomass boilers. At that time, there was a, a nice subvention of 30% coming from the Balearic government that helped us to decide for that. We implemented three geothermal heat pumps, uh, which uh, made it possible to place the, the air conditioning units, uh, to, to simplify it, were placed in the basement of the hotel. So the noise to our neighbors disappeared and they have a coefficient of performance of four. So the, for every kilowatt hour we put in, we get four. Uh, times uh, that energy amount in form of uh, climate. 
uh, and this uh, number four is uh, right now already reaching eight because of the new uh, innovations, uh, new um, efficiencies, and especially the new technology in refrigerants that the uh, industry is uh, uh, developing. So this is really a very important um, uh, aspect of, of any uh, net zero future. Okay, we also have some Aritelma heat pumps that were uh, have a lower uh, COP and that are more for a backup and uh, uh, and to cover peak demand in the in the bigger in the in the high season. Uh, we have solar panels, uh, thermal solar panels, um, also important. They cover eighty percent of the warm water de demand in the summertime. Um, and we took the chance to renew all the pipelines of the hotel because most of them were completely broken because of the bad water quality, okay? Besides that, we had an agreement, public-private agreement, which I'd like to point out, which was that we are using the wastewater, I call it this way, that comes from the sewage plant that is two kilometers away from the hotel, the public sewage plant, we uh, use that wastewater, treat it, and then use it for irrigation of our uh, gardens, okay? Uh, and uh, the jewel of the crown is our reverse osmosis. We produce 10,000 liters of water every hour in the best quality uh, at less than half the price that we used to pay. And with that, we avoid the consumption of 70 million liters of water from the aquifer every year. That's 20 big uh, uh, Olympic pools every year that we leave in the aquifer. And if we leave that water in the aquifer, we contribute to avoid the water intrusion of, the, of that aquifer. And we uh, help to uh, uh, not worsen I would say not worse than the quality of that water in that aquifer. Okay, uh, just uh, another information about uh, the reverse osmosis we're using. Our production uh, of uh, own water is uh, 2.2 kilowatt hours per 1,000 liters. That's in one hour, uh, our uh, system consumes as much as 12.2 hair dryers uh, of. 1,800 watt each, okay? Um, this one I will go very fast through. These are the next steps that we have in mind is in this, uh, mm, very fast. This is uh, our circular water autarky uh, concept. Uh, the idea is that any water in the house should stay in the house and should be reused, okay? I go very fast, it's in Spanish. You can check it out. Um, the idea is that we take uh, from uh, the uh, reverse osmosis, there comes uh, water, pure water that goes one way, there goes the, the um, salty water that goes another way. Uh, for instance, the salty water can be used uh, for uh, the electrolysis at our pools to produce uh, in, in on-site uh, chlor to disinfect the water uh, and so on. There are many things. I go very fast because uh, this is more than uh, well, th these are the results. We use water for irrigation, for installations, uh, and for cleaning, uh, the, the, the treated water, and of course, uh, the other water for uh, human uh, consumption, okay? So pools, human consumption, irrigation, installations, and cleaning. And my final slide comes now. Um, it's just uh, an introduction, but well, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's about net zero, okay? This hotel, uh, Robinson Calas Arena, as all the other hotels uh, in, on, my, on my portfolio, we're talking about 66 hotels. We need to go to zero emissions by 2030, uh, which is a very challenging task. Um, and these are the nine steps that I'm, I develop uh, for that purpose. So one second, here it is. Measure again, find energy savings and find energy efficiencies. The difference between one and the other energy savings is turn it off. If anybody protests, 
you went too far. But if nobody protests, just leave it off. So as Matthias said, any kilowatt hour that we don't consume is the cheapest. Uh, and efficiencies is, for instance, if you have a pump that is only possible to have it on or off 100% or 0%, uh, with efficiencies, you, you install there a frequency uh, 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 regulator, which can make that this pump works according to demand, okay? So instead of 100% or zero, it could work at 50%. I electrify everything. So we don't want anything that uh, represents uh, fumes, uh, not even a cigarette because it's not uh, good for your health. <laughs> and number five is uh, we um, plan to contract Green and green electricity wherever possible, and I am very uh, optimistic that this is going to be increasingly possible in most parts of the world. And wherever possible, and wherever we have the capex needed, we are going to invest in uh, green renewables for our own production, um, uh, which goes again into the direction of autarky of big uh, consumers. Uh, and uh, we need energy storage to cover the uh, night periods or the periods where the wind is not blowing, for instance. And there are two more things coming up. One is carbon accounting. I believe that soon, even in the hotel industry, um, the hotels will be not uh, judged only by EBITDA. They will be judged by EBITDA minus C. At EBITDA minus C is a new term I just invented, which would be EBITDA carbon. That means that uh, you will have to incorporate all carbon costs into the EBITDA uh, uh, sheet. And, 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 and then you will find out that some hotels that seem to be very, very, very profitable today uh, are less, and others that were on the second row uh, happen to be the champions, okay? And finally, verification. Uh, net zero, uh, uh, in, in order to avoid any greenwashing uh, risk or accusations, you need to be, you need to have a, a, an external uh, recognized uh, certification partner that tells uh, the world that this hotel or that, that chain of hotels is uh, net zero and has complied with uh, all what it needs to do. Okay, so that's uh, my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions and you can get in touch with me uh, through Cordula or Dirk. Thank you so much.